picture the late 90s an era when a young kiwi fast bowler burst onto the scene with raw pace and lethal swing shane bond with his flying hair and thunderous deliveries quickly became the talk of the cricketing world shane bond played on batsmen much like how james bond did his enemies in his days he batted stumps and toes with yorkers he even kept the best of batsmen on tender hooks with his ability to swing the ball both ways at genuine pace in fact he was the first ever to break the 150 km per hour barrier one of new zealand's best pacers after richard hadley this kiwi bowler redefined the meaning of pace and firepower once and for all so today we delve into the tale of one of the most promising fast bowlers of his generation a man whose career was plagued by injuries leaving fans to ponder what could happen hey guys what's up it's cricket stories back again with another video and today we are going to look at what happened to shane bond's career born in christchurch new zealand few people know that before starting his international career bond was actually a policeman he was relatively old when he made his first class debut at 21 years and 7 months old playing just 12 matches in his first three seasons for canterbury bond stopped playing cricket professionally for one year after he joined the new zealand police in november 1999 which left him no time to pursue his cricketing career finally he made his test debut in 2001 against australia and odi debut in the 2001 2002 series against australia and south africa and in his debut match he literally destroyed the australian batting lineup taking 3 wickets he ended up taking 21 wickets in 9 games earning a player of the tournament award he was the talk of the town as he was one of those bowlers whose stinging pace was flavored with mind boggling accuracy but after the tournament he suffered a foot injury one of the many that would mar his career all along his career the injuries would come back again back problems deep troubles abdominal tear stretch factors all relegating bond to the sidelines however he would make comebacks time and time again showing his never give up attitude which makes him stand out from the rest The back injury he suffered after the 2003 World Cup was the most severe of the lot. So much so that a titanium wire was fixed to his spine for recovery and stabilization. Bond returned after a lengthy gap on August 2005. And usually, almost every other bowler would take at least a few matches to get his rhythm back. But did you know what Bond did? In just his second match back, he took six wickets for 19 runs against India. That's absolutely insane. I mean how can someone take 6 wickets that to against India after a lengthy gap of almost 2 years this shows that bond was something very special and if not for the injuries who knows he would have surpassed sir richard hadley to become the best new zealand fast bowler moving on he was advised by the critics well wishers and seniors to give up on his pace and try to extend his cricketing career but bond simply refused his intensity refusal to compromise on pace and sheer guts to take on even the most ferocious batters in the world stood out from the rest of the greats of his time with every fall he came back stronger his 156.4 km per hour ball is the fastest ever at that time when bowled in 2003 and among the top 8 till date his execution was such that his ball swung in and because of his pace the swing came in late breaking the stumps of confused batters his outswingers were on point too His battle with Chris Gayle shows the same. Bond got his wickets seven out of eighteen times they faced each other, and it was his lethal outswingers that troubled the universe boss. In contrast to some other fully fast bowlers, Bond combined pace with control and accuracy, assets which helped him find success in all formats of the game. His yorkers have been described to be one of the most destructive and accurate ones of all time. Indeed, his bowling was a pleasure to watch, but an absolute threat to face. Despite landing on the surgeon stable more often than not, Bond refused to compromise on pace, a ploy which raised as many eyebrows as it did praise. However, amid all the mishaps, Bond's guts and firepower stood out. Up until the 2007 World Cup, the Aussies were the undefeated champions of the world in cricket. Playing against the batters would be any bowler's nightmare. During such an era, Bond had the Aussie batters completely under his spell. He captured three fifers against the Aussies. With his searing yorkers to Adam Gilchrist and Ricky Ponting, proving the icing on the cake in the 2003 World Cup, Bond played one of his greatest games of all time against Australia. Then, a 28-year-old Shane Bond tore into a formidable Australian lineup. In the 10 overs that he bowled, he took six wickets. Adam Gilchrist, Matthew Hayden, Ricky Ponting, Damien Martin, Brad Hawke, and Ian Harvey. His numbers from that game reached 
10 overs, 2 maiden, 23 runs and 6 wickets with the whopping 45 deliveries of the 60 being dots and giving away only a single boundary. Out of the 147 ODI wickets he has, 44 has come against Australia at an excellent strike rate of 15.79. Ricky Ponting was his bunny and was dismissed by Bond in all of his first 6 ODI innings. Even in his last ODI, he didn't let the Aussies breathe easily as took 4 wickets for just 26 runs that led to New Zealand winning by 51 runs. For someone who contested in 82 ODIs and faced some of the finest batsmen of their era, Shane Bond ended on a better economy rate than any notable pacer around with 4.29. Bond represented New Zealand in 120 international matches, scalping 259 wickets at an average of 21.37 and a phenomenal strike rate of 31.39. Bond currently has the second best bowling strike rate of all time in test match cricket. The numbers are incredible, aren't they? But have you ever thought what heights Bond would have achieved had he not been injury prone? Shane Bond would have been the most successful ODI bowler against Australia. It took 49 matches for the legendary Wasim Akram to grab 67 wickets, the most by any bowler against Australia in ODIs. Fair to say, had Bond remained injury free, he would have surpassed Akram's tally with ease as he had taken 44 wickets in just 17 appearances. Bond would have been the first New Zealand bowler to scale 40 wickets in ODI World Cups. The right arm seamer grabbed 30 wickets in 16 outings in the Mark Hugh event at a fabulous average of 17.26. Had he featured in another World Cup, he would have surely taken 10 more wickets to become the first bowler from New Zealand with 40 wickets in the mega event. He nearly missed 1000 days of active duties for New Zealand for he was often going under the knife on more occasions than haunting batsmen in a live contest. When a shoulder injury troubled but was dealt with, then a calf injury took over. When his knees hurt but got better, he suffered some lower back fractures. Had the injuries been kept at bay, the Kiwi special agent would have become one of the greatest fast bowlers in the history of cricket. It was a pity we did not get to see more of him in his international cricket days. But wherever he went, he never failed to leave a mark. One thing is sure. We will never see this Bond in his 20s gallop down the run-up, bend his back, bowl his heart out and petrify the batsman as he did a few years ago. But one thing is sure, if there is one pure enigmatic fast bowling talent in the past two decades which we would have loved to see more of, it's this one, Bond, Shane Bond. So guys, that's it for today's video, hope you liked it and if you did, Please drop a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as it really helps my channel to grow. Until next time, keep loving and enjoying the beautiful game. See you soon.